Today, I'm going to talk about the metadata propagation mechanism in Mercari. When we're doing smoke test, we only want internal requests to be tested in the new infrastructure. We don't want normal user, external user requests to go to the new infrastructure. If you look at the diagram, you can see this will be the ideal workflow. Uh, when the request comes to the API gateway, normal user requests should be routed to Ishikari data center. And our internal testing request should be routed to the new PHP APIs we set up in the Google Cloud. However, what this diagram may not illustrate is the complexity. Remember I mentioned that we have more than 200 services and they have very complex interactions. A request may come to the API gateway and then it may come to the service A, service B, and then that will talk to the PHP APIs. So only have the API gateway knowing the information about where it should go is not enough. The API gateway need to be able to detect if it's a testing request, and it will also need to be able to propagate that information to all of the services so that when all of the services decide where to talk to in the next step, they will know to talk to the right data center correctly. So that's the design of our testing infrastructure. And by doing so, if we can achieve so, as long as we have a very good set of behavioral driven tests on a high level about the features against the newly set up production legacy infrastructure in Google Cloud, we can be confident that the whole infrastructure is working. Given the complexity, otherwise testing the individual request path is almost impossible because of the number of services, number of different request paths. So in order to achieve this design, what we did was we created special clients with special QA headers, clients including like Android, iOS, and other programmatic API clients, which are special QA header. And then when the API gateway gets this request, it looks at the QA header, and then it detects if the request come from the same network segment, like our, product, our, our internal ne network segment, because we don't want an outsider to be able to control where the request goes. And once the gateway gets such information, the QA header and its internal, it determines, oh, this is an internal request, testing request. It then attach a metadata, a QA metadata to the request. And then that QA metadata, by using the metadata propagation infrastructure, is propagated into each of the services downstream until the end. And in our infrastructure, when the infrastructure, when the service talks to uh, the PHP legacy APIs, uh, there is a load balancer sitting above the PHP APIs. The load balancer also gets the metadata from the requests. So then it looks like metadata. If QA is true, then it routes the request to the Google infrastructure. And if QA is false, it routes the request to original Ishikari data center, assuming it's a, it's a normal user request. By doing so, we were able to do comprehensive testing of the newly set up production infrastructure in Google Cloud uh, for the legacy APIs before switching real traffic to it. And uh, the benefit of doing this instead of some other like hard-coded specialized solution on the load balancer is that many teams can do it at the same time, can do testing at the same time. If you're a team, you own a service, you're not sure because the request path is very complex. You're not sure if you end up reaching the legacy infrastructure uh, and how the migration would impact you. It's very easy for you as a service owner to launch some tests using these special clients. And then if your features all work right, work correctly, then you're most likely okay. So with this infrastructure, at the time, we at the night, we actually made the switch it was actually very, very, very smooth without uh, much unexpected behaviors. So this section shows how we used a metadata propagation mechanism to uh, test the QA, to test the data center migration project from Ishikari to Google in Tokyo. In the last section, I talked about a case study of how we used metadata propagation to test our data center migration project. In this section, I'm going to talk about the design and internals of the mechanism. So just to refresh the memory, metadata and Mercari means some out-of-band data used by the platform to provide functionality to the services on top of them. It's used by examples like authentication, experimentation platform, logging, and such. So in our infrastructure, we have several different kinds of services. We have HTTP services, gRPC services, and services that publish messages to PubSub and receive handling messages from PubSub. 
For HTTP and gRPC, metadata are propagated using request headers. And for PubSub messages, we propagate metadata using custom message attributes. In order to make it easier for service owners to propagate metadata in their services, we develop middlewares that could be integrated into the client server and their PubSub infrastructure. For HTTP and gRPC services, if the service receives requests from other services, the service needs to integrate with the server middleware, where it looks at the metadata from the HTTP or gRPC request header and then load the metadata into an internal metadata store. In our infrastructure, the majority of our services are written in Golang. And in our case, the internal metadata store, which is in memory, uses the context object. And if the service needs to send requests to other services, the way we propagate the metadata is by using the middleware and the middleware reading the metadata from the internal metadata store and then restore, transform them and restore to the request headers and send them out as a client middleware to uh, send, the, send the request out with the metadata using the client middleware to the other services. And we also use PubSub. If you're not familiar with PubSub, uh, it's basically a subscription uh, workflow that allows you to create different topics and create subscriptions and uh, services can publish messages to the topics and other services can subscribe to the topics. And once there is the message, the services can get the message and then do other things based on the message. In the publishing side, so as I said, majority of our infrastructure is in Golang and Google provides a Golang uh, library for PubSub. And that library doesn't have a uh, abstraction that allow us to plug in uh, middlewares or adapters. So what we did was to wrap the publish function provided by the Google library and then ask service owners to use our library that wraps this function to publish the message. And in the wrapper, what we did was to look at the message to be published and then read from the internal metadata store, which is the context object, get the metadata out and then attach to the message custom attributes and then published and then call the Google's libraries publish function to publish the message. There are third party open source libraries that provides the abstraction to plug in adapters and middlewares. And if you use one of those, it's completely okay too. It will, it will work. We actually also have an internal, internal one that does that. In that case, you just need to do the same things in the middleware that you read from the internal store uh, and then transform the metadata to custom message attributes to the messages being published. On the receiving side, PubSub provides two ways you can receive a message, pulling and pushing. By pulling, uh, your handler is basically pulling the queue at a frequency. And then uh, once it has a message you care about, the handler gets the message. In Google's uh, PubSub library for Golang, it provides a framework for the users to uh, plug in adapters. So we defined a adapter on the receiving side um, that adds metadata to the internal store, similar to the server middleware in the HTTP and gRPC case that it reads, once it gets the message, it reads from the uh, message to get the message attributes, to get the metadata out, and then store them, transform and store them to the internal store. For push, uh, how it works is that you register an endpoint with the PubSub infrastructure, and then once it gets the message you care about, it will push, it will send an HTTP call to your endpoint uh, with the message in the body. It almost works exactly the same as the HTTP server middleware, Except in the HTTP server middleware case, we are looking at the request headers to get the uh, metadata out. And in this case, all of the PubSub message will be in the request body. So we need to look at the request body and then find out the attributes key. Within that, look for the metadata. Thank you.